Hey class, Mr. M here with another video. This one is continuing what we first talked about last time with completing the square, this time a little more difficult. So let's review briefly. This is the problem we looked at last time. <clears throat> uh, I, would, I would look through these steps step by step, make sure everything makes sense. Um, just to briefly re review, we got uh, the 49 out of the way, moved it over here, and then we did this process over here called completing the square, where you take the middle term called b and you cut it in half and then um, that's where the negative 4 came from, then you square it and you add it back in and you gotta do it to both sides to maintain equality and that makes this thing factorable. In fact, it makes it factorable such that you have, notice here, a square hence the name. You have added in 16 in order to make this able to become a square and that's why it's called completing the square. But notice, all along in this problem the leading coefficient was 1. What do I mean by that? Think back to algebra. Remember, a coefficient is simply a number that sits in front of a variable. Here, in the general form of a parabola, it's a and b. The leading coefficient is the one that's in front, leading, uh, when the equation is written in descending order, so from higher to lower exponents. So essentially it's the number in front of the x squared term, to be concise. And if you look back at our problem, the number in front of the x squared term was just a 1x squared, 1x squared, and so on. Well, today's problem is not going to have that. It's going to be a little bit more difficult. So, here's today's problem. 3x squared minus 24x minus 15. Notice that the leading coefficient here is 3. That's going to be a little, a little bit of an issue. But the first step is, just like last time, isolate the x term. So get x by itself. So what is that going to look like? Simply add uh, 15 to both sides. Let me do this in red. Add 15, add 15, and that leaves us with 3x squared minus 24x, leave a space and you'll see why, equals 15. Step 2. Now this part was not necessary on the last video because our leading coefficient was 1. So if necessary, make leading coefficient 1 by factoring. So I'm going to take this 3, which is our leading coefficient, out of the problem. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to factor out a 3. So if I factor a 3 out, I'm going to be left with just x squared. And the way to check for factoring, by the way, is just to distribute back in. So if you're not sure if you're doing it right, just distribute that 3 and you should end up with the previous line. So 3x squared, well, 24 divided by 3 is uh, 8x, right? And the other side is still 15. So the equation is exactly the same as it was. I haven't changed anything. The way you can check once again is just distribute. 3x squared, yep, negative 24x, there it is, and 15 is over there. Okay, so far so good. Now the steps are pretty much like they were, except for a key difference, and I'll, I'll mention that in just a second. So step 3 take half of the x's coefficient. That's what we did last time, so that looks something like this, where you take this value, which is negative 8, and you cut it in half. So I'm going to multiply it by 1 half, and that gives me uh, negative 4. And the next step is to square it. So square the result. So step 4, square result. So negative 4 times itself gives you positive 16. And I'll do that in green again, just to show that it's, it's very much the same step. And here is the key difference to this problem. This is what makes it a lot more difficult. I'm not done with this step yet, by the way. I'm going to add something over here. I am not really adding 16 to this problem. Now, you might be thinking, what the heck? It's a plus 16. How are you not adding 16, Mr. M? Well, notice, this is not x squared and negative 8x in the problem. It was 3x squared and 3 negative 8s, better known as 24. Thus, it is 3 times 16. In other words, if you were to distribute this problem back to where it uh, was still 3x squared, that's what this term is. And if you are to distribute the 3 and get the negative 8, that's where this term is. 
So I'm not really adding 16. I'm adding 3 times 16. So on the left hand side, I'm adding 16 in the parentheses. But since I have 3 times this parentheses, I'm really adding 16 times 3. 16 times 3 is 48. So if to the left hand side, I'm adding 3 16s or 48, I must add to the right hand side to maintain equality. Also must add 48. So I'm going to call that step 5 over here. Now, I'm kind of, I ran out of room over there, so I'll just write it here. Step 5, I guess I'll write that as carefully add to both sides. And that will become easier with practice, I promise, where you have to recognize that you're not really adding the, the b squared, uh, b minus b over 2 squared. You're really adding... Uh, whatever this number out here is. And if you go back to the last problem, we basically did the same thing. There we added 16, right, sort of a coincidence, but this number out here was just 1, so we added 16 to both sides. In this case, we're adding 3 16s, or hence 48. So that's what I mean by carefully add to both sides. So now on the left-hand side, I'm going to try to cram this in here. Let me shrink this a little bit. It's kind of large. Oh, that's not good. Ah, I forget. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna rewrite this a little bit uh, to make it more legible. Three times what we have here is x squared minus eight x plus sixteen, and on the other side, uh, this over here, fifteen plus forty eight is just sixty three. And now this thing right here is factorable. It becomes x minus four times x minus four, and you can check that just multiply it, and you see you get the previous step. Well, that further becomes x minus 4 squared, just to compress it a little bit. And then you can divide both sides by 3, and I'm running out of room here, but I'll try to cram it in. And That gives us x minus 4 squared equals 21. 63 divided by 3 gives us 21. And thus, we have completed the square. Again, why is it called complete the square? Squared. So, to quickly summarize, isolate your x terms, that's what we did right here. Make the leading coefficient 1 by factoring, that's what occurred right there. Uh, take half of the x's coefficient, square the result, that's what all this business was about. And then I have to carefully add it to both sides. I added 16, but I really added three 16s, hence 48. All right, that about wraps it up, and I will see you in class uh, tomorrow. Hope this helps.